Grace the Stallion here from Talk It Out Radio, and we are at Queens Underground's very first film festival here, guys, International Film Festival, right here in Queens, New York City. So I am getting ready to interview some of the artists that are going to be on the stage tonight showing their films. It's going to be a dope show, so if you are not here, you don't know what you're missing. Again, Grace the Stallion, and it's Let's Get the Party Shot. Grace the Stallion here, guys, and we are at the Queens Film Festival with a lot of artists that are going to be on the screen tonight, like the one standing next to me. What's your name, sir? Tommy Tucker. Tommy Tucker. Tommy Tucker, you're going to be in the film tonight, aren't you? Yes, I uh, produced and directed my film, and I star in my film, so I'll be in tonight. Wow, so you wrote, produced, and directed your film. Talk about a triple threat. <laughs> What's the name of your film? It's called The Tough Love Show. It's a documentary short about me and my son and unique situations that happened in our life that caused us to go viral and uh, we end up making a film about it. So this is a true story? 100% true story. <laughs> he said 100% true story. So tell us um, what is like your favorite part in this documentary? Uh... My favorite part in the movie would probably be uh, where my son transitions from uh, being introverted and struggling in school to seeing his progression to being an honor roll student. Now that sounds awesome. So this is something that people can take home with them and it'll have some sort of effect in a good way? I'm hoping that my movie will adjust the landscape of black fatherhood. Like it'll, it'll make us revisit every, every form of discipline that we were taught with to interact with our sons. That sounds awesome. We need more things like that, especially fathers with their sons. So outside of being shown here tonight, how can people see this film? Uh, TheToughLoveShow.com. Follow me at Tough Love Show on Instagram. There you guys have it. Make sure you watch Tough Love. I'm going to check that out myself, guys, and let y'all know what I think. This is Grace and Stallion, and once again, we're at the Queens Film Festival. We'll be right back. Grace the Stallion here, guys. We are back, still here at the Queens Film Festival, the first international black film festival. And we have another film director up here, an actress. How are you guys doing? We're, Good. We're great, we're great. Tell us your name. Kathleen Leoto. Dwayne Parker. Kathleen and Dwayne. I'm loving you guys' outfit. The pants is dope, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. So we were talking a little bit offset, and you were telling me about a film you have that's going to be showing tonight. They're going to be showing, um, not the whole film, well, actually, um, I submitted one of our trailers. Um, I am the executive, co-executive producer uh, to Landra V. Phillips' creation, which is Asunder. It's on Amazon Prime right now. Um, it features uh, one of the most familiar faces, Don Bishop, uh, Lauren B. Martin, uh, Robert McKay, Tony D. Head. Those are some of the few names that are uh, on this show. Uh, it's gotten a lot of reviews. A trailer right now is out on YouTube. You can go and look that up. The trailer is called The Sunder Secrets. Um, I'm also part of my production company, Night 7 Productions, is uh, coming out with a movie, a full feature called Vex, that will be out later this year, starring Kathleen. And uh, she's also into uh, some directing and, and so, so. So um, I wrote and directed my first short film. It's called The Metal. And um, it's a comedic thriller because I feel like women of color were not really seen in horror movies. So I wanted to have an all black cast and we're gonna complete that probably towards the end of 2020. Um, I'm also featured um, as a guest star and a series regular now for season two of Asunder on Amazon Prime. Um, I'm a fashion illustrator, so some of my artwork will be featured in the show as well. That is beautiful, so you're like a triple threat. You do it all. I try to be, I try. We need that with our black women, you know what I'm saying? We have to get out there more and put our names out there. We have so much talent and it's so underappreciated. So tell us about the film, what is it about? All right, so this film is about uh, two guys from opposite sides of the law who meet up and they go on a journey of revenge and forgiveness. It also deals with some aspects of the school to prison pipeline. I'm a guidance counselor at the High School for Law Enforcement and Public Safety over here. And I just kind of wanted to kind of highlight that. Even though it's a revenge film, it does have those aspects in it. Uh, so I think it'll be very interesting for people uh, once they get a, a, you know, a gander of it. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know if you want to, to mention anything. <laughs> so, I'm actually starring in his film. Um, my character, she gets mixed up into some crazy drama, but not in the way you would think. 
but I think I'm going to save that for the film. <laughs> when we come back to this festival, then you can see what happens. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And we're both locals from Queens. Um, I actually grew up in this area. I went to PS30, 72, and August Martin, for those who know right. where this is. And I work at the High School for Law Enforcement right now as a guidance counselor. So uh, education and, and um, that whole school to prison pipeline thing is very important. To so with your background, this film depicts some real life situation. We try to, with a little bit of entertainment in there. So, <laughs> so what's the biggest takeaway you want your viewers from this that's going to be watching this film to take away? Uh, I want them to know what forgiveness is about. Forgiveness is very important, um, and just to understand that even though people come from very harsh backgrounds, um, they can change. People can change. And um, I don't know if. Well, based on my character, I would say what I want people to get out of this film is that you have to know what you want in life. Know what you're going after. Um, don't expect anything from anybody. You got to go get that yourself. Uh -huh. See, she may be small, but she's packing a punch over here. Very intelligent. I love it. I am tiny but mighty. <laughs> I love it. So tell everybody where they can find you and follow you and keep up with you guys' work. You can follow my Instagram at letter K dot L-I-A-U. T-A-U-D, that's my last name, Lyoto. It's in French. I know, I'm extra. That's just... <laughs> and you can find me at Who is Dwayne Parker on Instagram, at Night7Productions on Instagram, and at Vex the Movie on Instagram. Love it. And that's how they can find the film? Or will it be on Amazon too? Yes, we're working on, on the whole distribution with that, so yes. All right, guys, you got it here first at the Queens Film Festival. I'm Grace the Stallion. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Grace the Stallion here, guys, and we are still having a great time at the Queens Film Festival, guys. It's the first black international film festival, and I'm standing here with some more black beauties. How you ladies doing? How are you? Thank Hi. you. Same here. Thank you. You guys are looking beautiful. You ladies are looking beautiful. Thank you. I love it, girl. I love my black girl magic. So I represent for my black sisters. Tell us your name. I'm Tara Nicole. Yeah, beautiful. Valerie Panette. Love it. And I love the personality. So what is your part in the film festival tonight? Um, so we have a web series that's being screened here today called the Day and Night series um, that we both co-produced and uh, co-wrote. And so we're really happy about being here. It's an awesome right, festival. Don't let her be shy. She's also the lead in the web series as well. Yeah. Yes, she plays the role of Ivy. Yes. Now tell me about Ivy's character because her character right now seems very sweet and shy. Look at that. She's not. See, I knew it. <laughs> Completely opposite. She's wild and uninhibited, and uh, she's a boss, and she's a mess, and wow. yeah, she's, she's a lot of sexual innuendos <laughs> as well. <laughs> Are you in the movie too? No, I directed. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So you said I'm going to stay behind the cameras, and nobody's going to see me. Be a little tame. Is what she does. Yeah. So tell me, what is it about? So um. It's about um, professionals who kind of blur the line between work and pleasure, and we kind of like explore the juxtaposition of the two and the consequences of blending the two as well. So it's a little, you know, a little spicy, yeah. a lot of drama, <laughs> personal nice. and professional. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So you tell me, what was the most exciting part shooting this film with you, for you? I mean, okay, so being a writer um, and being able to see the words come to life on the screen was nuts. Yeah. It's just nuts to, to see it happen. Um, I think that was probably it. The camaraderie on set and just the stories we told and and the and the characters like really like we one thing we didn't want to male bash and do anything like anything like that. So we have really awesome male characters who make mistakes. They're not perfect but they're forgivable and, and redeemable. And that's what that was super important for us. Um, so yeah that was and is this season one of the series? Yes, this is season one. We're actually in pre-production and we actually start production literally oh, next, week next week for season yeah. two. Yeah. So we're really excited. Yeah. Um, the, the series actually was about 15 to 20 minute episodes. Now we're, we're going to have like 30 to 40 minute episodes. Yeah. So we're like yeah. stepping it up. Yeah, people wanted more yeah. so we gave them more right. this season. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the feedback you've been getting. People that's been seeing the film, what have they been saying? They want more. They want more. They're like, the episodes are too short. We heard you. We wrote. We took our time. This season's going to be nuts. Like, 
so good. I'm so excited. We're so, we're so excited. Yeah. We're Where can they find this web series? Okay, so we are on. YouTube. Yeah, we're on YouTube yeah. right now. Yeah. So if you YouTube the day and the day and night series, you will find us. We have six episodes for season one. We have seven episodes coming up for season two. Fully packed with drama and yeah, I we're super excited. Yeah. So How long was the shooting and the writing before you guys? So, um, season one, I wrote myself, um, and I literally, we were friends at our nine to fives, and I showed it to her, and she said, oh girl, we're producing this, like, we're doing this. And so I wrote it in a month, all six episodes in a month. We started pre-production and started shooting like three months after I was done writing. Um, this season, because it, we really took our time, we listened to what people said, it took us close to a year to write, um, and we co-wrote together, and it is and like I'm so excited of the of the story. Not a long night. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, tell me what the nights when you guys was like. Okay, I don't like this scene. She's like, no, I like this scene. Oh, there yeah. was that. There was a lot yeah. of that. There was a lot of that. We literally we yeah. had an episode one. We scrapped it. We started from scratch. Yeah. And we but we're really proud of the work. Yes. We're really yes. proud of the work. Yes. So yes. proud of the work. That's how you come up with dope work. Yeah. Definitely. Two minds is yeah. also yeah, yeah, yeah. a whole yeah. lot better. No, than no, no. Like I know for sure. I can say this with my whole heart that season two is impeccable. We have stepped our game up. Having Valerie on as a writer with me was sick. Like the things we came up with, I'm so excited for everyone to see it. We're gonna be filming over the next four months. We only shoot on the weekends, so we're filming over the next four months. It's a, a and we have an awesome cast, awesome crew. We are really looking forward yeah, to new this. Additions too. Yeah. That's what I was gonna ask next. How do people find your film if they want to be a part of it? Oh, so well, actually, you can um, email us. We can probably or, yes. We also have our Instagram. Um, so at the Day and Night series on Instagram, okay. we are. Um, our email um, is. Um, Oh, we have uh, Valterra Productions. That's the name of our production company. So, Valterra Productions at gmail.com. Please, we are always looking for new people. This is a playground, okay, for us. Like, I, we started writing to create a playground for creatives to come in and do what they do. Like, that's right. Yeah. And, and anyone that's interested in film, you can also volunteer. We, we can use all the help we can on set. So, we always welcome people to yeah. come and join. Yeah. I love that. You guys got me so excited to watch this film myself. <laughs> so, it's on YouTube, day and night. Series on YouTube. Yeah. Nice series, guys. Speak it into existence. No, I'm so serious. Definitely speak it into existence. <laughs> and they're here tonight, too. Go plug. Shameless plug. Because in real life, they'd be like, right there, we're going after them. And be looking things on today. I will chase I'll be tiptoeing right behind you. Yeah. I enjoy watching. I'm talking to you guys. Tell us one more time how they can find you and follow you. Absolutely. So we are on YouTube. It's the Day and Night Series on YouTube. Our Instagram is at the Day and Night Series. And it, feel free to email us at Valterra Productions at gmail.com. Thank you so much, guys. Oh my All right. We'll be back. Hey guys, we are back still rocking out here at the Black Film Festival. As you can see, we've been talking to some dope talent, and now we got some dope, young, beautiful talent. How you doing? I'm good. Tell us your name. My name is Soleil Hall. Soleil Hall. Ms. Soleil says she wants to come up here by herself, y'all, and let her know all about her talent. So you're a performer. What do you perform? I sing. I sing a lot. I sing. And I'm also learning piano. That's very awesome. Are you singing here tonight? Yeah. Did you perform yet? No. Okay, good. So we didn't miss her yet, guys. So we're going to definitely check you out. How long have you been singing? Four years. Four years now. How did you know you wanted to sing? I was obsessed with the show Wicked, and I called my dad into my room, and I loved the song Defying Gravity. So when I sung it for him, he I also sung it for my music teacher. So they said I should take music lessons, and from there I started singing. What was your dad's reaction when you showed him you could sing? He was surprised. <laughs> I bet he was. He was like, oh, we're going to milk this, right? Yeah. So is he the, your biggest supporter in your corner? I mean, I have a lot of supporters, but yeah. He's one of your biggest. Yeah. Awesome. So what are you singing for us tonight? What's the song? Won't He Do It. Well, okay. Wait, I don't think y'all heard that. Won't He Do It. You're sing That's awesome, girl. Do you also write your music? No, not yet. Are you just singing? Yeah. I am loving it. And so how long have you been playing the piano? Two years. Okay. I sleep. Three and a half years. So we're definitely going to be looking forward to seeing you and your years growing up and all this talent. Do you have a social media for people to find you and follow you? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Are you on your dad's social media? No. 
I'm going to make my own social media. I just turned 12, so yeah, I'm going to oh, make one. Okay. So make sure you guys come check her out here tonight. And if, if they want to see your music or hear you, how can anybody hear you? My, I'm going to have an Instagram account soon. I don't know when, but I'm going to have one soon. And you, uh, you guys can also hear me tonight when I'm singing. That's right. You got to have your own fans here. So we're going to talk it out some more with your dad. It's very pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Do you want to give a shout out to anybody? The Pierre family, the Hall family, and everyone from Scholars Academy. <laughs> I love it. I love this young lady. So we'll be right back, guys. This is Grace and Sally. Alright guys, we are back with some more dope talent in the building here at the Queens Film Festival. Tell us your name, sir. My name is Wesley Hall. About, about West Money. West Money. I'm talking, I'm talking about where you get that name from. I don't know, my friends gave it to me and I started rapping and I kept it. You got a lot of money, what? Of course. Let me hold some. I got you. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure he gave me some of that money too, y'all. So tell us what's your talent. Are you performing tonight? Yeah, I'm performing. I, I make music and I also play instruments and basketball. Okay. I love the basketball and you play instruments. What instruments do you play? I play the piano, the marimba, the bells, the drum set, and yeah, basically all percussion type of instruments. What's your favorite? The drums. I knew you was going to say the drums. You look like you're a good drummer. So are you rapping here for us tonight as well? Yes. So do you write your raps or are you? Yes, I write my own songs. I hear that. How long have you been rapping? Two years, or like a year and a half. And you just started spitting in school, and they was just like, yo. Not even. I was playing around. Somebody told me to make a song. I made it, and then everybody loved it, so I just kept going. And any inspiration behind that? Did you Any artists that inspired you to do this? A Boogie. Which one? A Boogie. Oh, A Boogie with the hoodie. <laughs> See, I'm not into that new school rap. How about Kendrick Lamar? You like him? I don't, yeah, I like him. He's talented, but I found my inspiration. Everybody says the same thing. That's interesting. All right, so do you have social media so we can find you and keep up with your music? My Instagram is at the real West with two S's and an and underscore at the end. And my music is on Apple Music at West Money with a dollar sign for the S. And my SoundCloud is West Money Productions, dollar sign for the S too. Is on SoundCloud and everything already, y'all. This brother is doing the thing. Well, it is a pleasure talking it out with you tonight. We will make sure we promote you, find him, follow him, guys, and then support this brother. It has been great talking to you. We'll see you later. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we keeping it rolling. So this young man we're gonna talk it out with, we just spoke with his nephew and his daughter, full of talent in the talented family. So let us know what your talent is. Hi everybody, how you doing? Um, my name is Randy Hall. I'm the CEO and founder of Influence Activewear. Um, my talent is strictly motivation and um, setting a great example for my niece, my nephews, my daughter, um, kids in the community. I'm a big community activist. I um, do a lot of community events. Um, that's my brand. That's in the background. Um, the brand was created to fund gifts back to the community. Um, it's, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things is going on in the world today. I feel that we don't give back enough and try to help these kids because they're in a time where it's hard. It's not the same when we grow up. So I just, my mission is to um, just give back and, and give them the opportunities that we never had. How do you juggle all this? I mean, you're, you're helping out your baby girl, you got your nephew, you got your own brand and business going on. And I also work for the Department of Sanitation. And you work for the Department of Sanitation. <laughs> You're a community activist. How do you find time to squeeze everything in? Listen, man, excuses satisfy no one. Results influence everyone. That's, that's the motto I live by. Um, you just got to do it, man. We just got to get up and do it. We all make time for stuff that we want to, but the stuff that we should make time for, we always have an excuse. So right. my motto is I get out there and do it. Right. So tell us about your brand. What was your inspiration behind your brand? Well, the brand was fun, was created to fund givebacks. Um, you know, sometimes you go to different vendors and ask them to donate to the community to give back. The same businesses that's in the community that's making money from the community, they find it hard to give back. So I said, you know what? I'm going to come out with my own brand and whatever whatever profits I make, I put it right back into the community. Just this year alone, I did uh, six events. Three of them was I um, collab with uh, the 113 Precinct and the 101. And then the last three I did on my own. I did a, a book bag event. I gave out 350 book bags with school supplies. 
Also did a Halloween party for the kids, set up a trick-or-treating stations. Then I did a Christmas party where I gave out 400 gifts to kids in the shelter and the kids in the neighborhood. So that is freaking awesome. Now, is your bread affordable? I find most of the time with us, we make it so expensive, people can't afford it. So let us know, how's your prices? My prices is low. <laughs> he said my prices is low. It's, it's, it's definitely affordable for the community. And that's another thing, too, that I, I've, because I'm a gym rat. I'm always in the gym. And I see Nike, Adidas, all of them, they, I feel like they're raping our people. It's taking our money. And they don't, and these guys don't really give back to our community. So um, my, my t-shirts is $20. My hoodies are cheap $30, $40. Joggers, same thing. Nothing is over $50. And if you compare the prices to any anything out there, it's way, way cheaper. And it's uh, some of my most of my stuff is better quality. So are you excited to hear your baby girl perform tonight? Always excited. That's, 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 that's my star there. She's going to be... Uh, you gonna see her, and that's my little NBA star right there, my nephew. He didn't tell you he played basketball. He did. He did. All right. You gonna be in the NBA? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Did you guys see how he just lit up when he talked about his baby girl? <laughs> that's what I love. Fathers that love their baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So tell everybody how they can find you and follow you and get your brand. They can find me on um, Instagram and Influence Activewear, and um, InfluenceActivewear.com. The website is gonna be live. March 1st. I just did the last meeting with the girl that's creating the website for me. So March 1st, the website is going to be live. You guys heard it first right here at Queens Film Festival. I'm Grace the Stallion and we'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. We are still here rocking out at the Queens Film Festival with all the talent we got in the building and they just keep on coming. So we have this young beautiful thing right here next to me and we're going to get to know her a little bit. Tell us your name. Hi, my name is Ritu Shah. I got I to gotta be able to pronounce that. Say it again. Yeah, it's Ritu Shah. Ritu Shah. That's beautiful. And tell us what's your role in the film festival tonight. So I directed, produced, and edited a film called Behind the Walls, and it was about the racism against Afro-Portuguese citizens in Portugal. Wow. So it ain't just black people being <laughs> discriminated against. Yeah, wait, sorry, say that one more time. It's not just black people being discriminated against. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, so it is, it's the Afro-Portuguese community in Portugal who's being, yeah, very discriminated against, yeah. Now that sounds really interesting. Tell us a little bit about the film. Yeah, sure. So basically, I was senior year of my school, and we were going to Portugal for one week, and I kind of just discovered a lot of, like, um, just a lot of, sorry, just a lot of stuff going on with Portugal and the racism there. So basically... A lot of um, books and literature have, have painted this picture saying that um, a lot of the colonizers were saviors. So now in Portugal and in people's heads in Portugal, they're like, we're not racist. We saved you. Like, we saved your lives. So they don't ever, and they will never see, well, sorry, they don't ever see themselves as racist. It pretty much goes to that core. And that's kind of how things have gone pretty bad. So that was your inspiration behind the film. So once you had that inspiration, how long did it take you to get it all done? Okay, so filming, we only had one week in Portugal to film. So I filmed eight interviews in seven days. I still don't know how I did it. Um, and there were, there were pretty long interviews, two hours, you know, trying to get everything out because I was only there for a week. So after seven days, um, we had, I think, three weeks to edit it. I could not edit that in three weeks. There was just too much going on. So I think it took me about, like, honestly, a year just to get everything in place, have it. It's some, I just wanted to make it sure it was a story. It wasn't just like a Nat Geo, like just yeah. throwing facts at you. I want it to be a story and have it where you could somehow relate or just understand these characters and their point of views. So it took me about like a year and a half. Yeah. That is awesome. So out of all the people that you interviewed for the film, who touched you the most? Whose story was like, hit you at home? Yeah, so there's one, uh, she's a nanny and her name is Amelia Alves. She's in Portugal right now. She, basically in the film, it talks about how she wasn't even allowed to, like she was a maid, she was actually a maid for someone, like a, a person's house. She wasn't even allowed to use her bathroom in the house. Wow. She had to go to the yard into a shed and go there. And then also, the dishes that she owned and she used, she wasn't allowed to even wash them there. She had to take her dirty dishes back in her bag and go all the way back to where she lived. See, and there's people that we, we live in different places, so we don't always know what's going on in other places. So the fact that you bring awareness of a place like Portugal, people wouldn't think that these things are happening, is amazing. So since the film has been out, what's the feedback you've been getting? 
So this is actually one of my first film festivals. So um, it's been really great. A lot of people are just so interested, again, because they just never knew. Right. And I think I'm really glad, like, it's really touched a lot of people's hearts. They're starting to connect with these characters and it's just, I think now at this point, people really want to know how they can help. So I'm going to try to start a GoFundMe to um, kind of raise more awareness and also just help some of the schools out there. Right. Yeah. Are you going to have a part two to the film? Um, I would love to. I am planning to go back to Portugal and seeing what more I can do. And I mean, I'm trying to get this out to their government. I want, I want to just call out everyone there to, you know, show them like this isn't a secret anymore. Um, I would love to do that. See what progress you can make. That'd be great. That would absolutely be great. So, what is the biggest takeaway you want people to take away from your film? That's a very good question. <laughs> I guess. Hmm. I guess. I, I guess kind of what you were saying about like there's so many issues we don't know like that's going on around the world and police violence is an issue here you know but to also kind of relate it to where it is all around the world and maybe if we can help like maybe we can get ideas from different places we can help issues just around us too. That is awesome. So lastly, how can everybody find your film and support if they would like to? Sure. So my Instagram is Ritu Shah. So it's R-E-E-E-T-U underscore S-H-A-H. And Instagram is probably the best way. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you guys heard it first right here on Talk It Out Radio at the Black Film Festival. And we will be right back. All right, guys, we are still rocking out here at the Queens Film Festival, the first international black film festival. And we got some more dope black talent up here, guys. Won't you tell us your name? My name is B-Rad Thomas. B-Rad Thomas. I'm John Dove, the Mighty Kingpin crew. OK, I love it. So what are you guys do? What's your role in the film festival? Well, I'm an artist, and uh, he did a video for me. He did the actual the drawing, the art, artistic uh, vision for it. Wow, so you draw art? Yeah, the uh, Wonderland video that was just played, and uh, I appreciate the Queens Underground family for you know bringing us out from Dallas. But uh, yeah, I did the Wonderland video, the whole animated video he, for his song, his new album that came out. So. That is pretty dope. So you have an album that just came out? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about it. The album's called Obsidian. Uh, John Doe produced Obsidian. I released it about a month ago. It's on every major streaming service. That's J-A-H-N-D-O-U-G-H and Obsidian, just how you spell Obsidian, just like this stone. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you said they just played some of it tonight? Yes, ma'am. They played it. It was beautiful. And I, and I love the energy and I love the, just the camaraderie that I see here. It's really it sucks that I missed it. So tell us, are you going to perform live or are we just having an air on the video? Oh, I'm just airing the video. Yeah, I'm, just airing, I'm really here for him because he's the artist behind it, behind the, the visual for it. So, yes, ma'am. So, how did you guys link up? We're actually friends from college. Uh, he's been doing his art, I mean, sorry, his music career for a while. I've been doing my art career for a while. And, like, our, our careers just kind of, like, end up running into each other. And he hit me up and wanted me to do an animated music video for him. So, I ended up doing the Wonderland video. It was, it was all from there. He actually, when he showed me the song, he didn't even have it yet. You know, he just played the beat and started rapping, you know. And I was like, oh, yeah, we got something here. That's something for that. That's something, you know. So. And that's how easy it comes to you with your art? Yes, ma'am. I, I mean, I've, I've been doing animation for a while, but this is, like, my first, like, major project. You know, it was, I'd say like all the stuff I did before was kind of like more like mixtape LP status and it's more like an album type thing for me as well. So, you know, it, it was nice to see that it's getting such a good reception, you know, all the way from, you know, 1,500 miles away in Dallas, you know, get to come out here to Queens, New York and represent. So, so yeah, no, it, it was beautiful. It, it was beautiful seeing my work up on a big screen, you know. <laughs> How long have you been doing your art? Uh, I've been an artist for probably like since I was five years old, but I've been, I've been publicly uh, presenting my art since 2016 now, so you know, three years, three years ago, if you told me I got this far, you know, you're right, yeah, you know, you're crazy, right? Yeah. But that's how it happens. You gotta speak it into existence. And so you guys hooked up. You did his cover for him. You're rapping on the album. How many songs do we have on this album? On the album, we have 14 songs with multiple producers, and it's just a, a pretty much an album about the state of grief. You know, we get, as black men, we have a lot of grief that we don't really like to talk about. So in this album, I like to, you know, unleash that and be vulnerable for once, basically. Absolutely. What's your favorite song on your album? Oh, wow. Hey, <laughs> favorite song. Uh, he's on danger. That's why. Yeah, he's talking on danger. That's why he's saying that. 
I'll say the one I want people to hear the most is Punch Out. Cause that one's really impactful. That one's really, it, it kind of hits home what the album's true message is about, basically. Perfect. Yes, ma'am. I'm actually loving that. And how can people find your music one more time? Oh, it's on every major streaming service, Spotify, Tidal, iTunes, and the album's called Obsidian. So O-B-I-S-D-I-A-N, Obsidian. If I spell it wrong, I apologize. It's Google Obsidian. And uh, my name is John Doe, J-A-H-N-D-O-U-G-H. So, what was your feedback since the album was already out, right? What's the feedback you've gotten so far? It's the best feedback I've got. I've been rapping since 2011, and this is the greatest feedback I've had since. Um, I'm getting a lot of interviews. I'm getting a lot of love, genuine love at that. And um, I, I love it. I'm excited. It's only been out for a month, and I'm already in Queens, New York. So, you know, so it's... I hear that. Yeah, right. Are you going to have him do some more of your artwork? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. We did this at the beginning. We're going to... Right, this was like the third thing. Was that like so we we been like even before this uh, this video. I did uh, the video for his first single. You know, it was a live shot video that I drew animations and cartoons for. It. So so yeah, we've been we've been collaborating. I mean, basically like everything we've done so far has kind of like we've gotten good feedback on it. You know, so we, we want to keep that going. Too. That's what it's about. Make sure you guys support these brothers. Tell us how they can find you and follow you and get your work. Hey, you can follow me on Instagram at Brad Does Cartoons. You can hit me up, DM me anything. You know. I love that. Be Red Dust Cartoons. Y'all look out for these guys. Definitely. They came all the way from Dallas, Texas, representing right here in New York at the Queens Underground. So make sure you support these brothers one more time. You got some dope talent over here with the rapping and some dope talent over here with the art. Nice collaboration. <laughs> so we are representing the Queens Underground Film Festival. I'm Grace Thee Stallion from Talk It Out Radio, and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we are back, still rocking out here at the International Film Festival with another beautiful diva up here doing the thing in the world. So tell us your name. My name is Rosalind Campbell. I am one of the filmmakers involved with the film My Daughter Tyler, which just showed. My Daughter Tyler is a film that promotes LGBTQ family acceptance and understanding. Um, I'm actually the assistant director, screen writer and casting and basically we're a nonprofit organization so we all wear many hats but our esteemed director Andre Lambertson who's not able to be here is actually a war an award-winning documentary filmmaker who was the our art filmmaker for this and I believe this might have been his first narrative project so we're very happy to have him on as the director. So, no, I just watched that film. That was pretty deep and pretty moving and pretty touching. And so you were a part of that. See, I get to meet the person behind that. Because I was sitting there like, wow, that one was good. That was really good. Thank you. Um, our film is part of a, a tool of a, of a larger program. I'm the program manager for what is CAMBA Project Ally, which stands for Project Accept LGBTQ Youth. We're a program of CAMBA in Brooklyn, where we actually go out and we facilitate workshops in the community, organizations, staff workshops, and families, all on LGBTQ family acceptance. So the tools that we have are our, our role model story. Whoa, the role model story. I thought I had the role model story in my hand, but this is a, a wonderful person that I met upstairs, <laughs> who is an amazing artist. Um, but our role model stories are all true stories that are of parents who overcame challenges towards accepting their LGBTQ youth. Right. So my daughter Tyler is one of eight stories that we have. Our, on postcards that we share with the community along with other stories and to, to build conversations around um, understanding LGBTQ youth, people, and creating that basically to decrease the stigma. Right. So by having these conversations and being open and really helping people understand that at the end of the day, love is love, people are people, and understanding that just because somebody does not do what you do or love or like what you like doesn't make that wrong for them. Absolutely. So, and why do you feel like this is so important for people to get and to know? Well, it's important because if people are not aware of the statistics when it comes to family acceptance, when LGBTQ youth are not accepted by their families, they are eight times as likely to attempt suicide in their lifetime. They are six to eight times as likely to experience depression, and they are three to five times as likely to become put themselves at risk for HIV 
and other STDs. And that goes along the gamut of other statistics and other things too. We add in drugs, add in homelessness, um, alcoholism, all of these things are in the umbrella of of occurrences for people who are not accepted by their families. All of the statistics also show that even with just a little bit of acceptance, that can go a long way towards changing an LGBTQ young person's life hope, life expectations, and their ability to be happy. And guess what? You don't have to be part of the community. This is about creating allies. I am an ally for any young person who is looking for acceptance or looking to just have a conversation with someone who looks at them like a person, Absolutely. like a local person. Absolutely. Now, tell me about the feedback you've gotten from your film so far. Well, uh, the feedback has been amazing. Again, when we did this film, it was really more of a, for our programming, like more of a PSA that to use as a tool when I facilitate the workshops to create empathy and get people to really be more empathetic and drawn in to the story. And what has happened with the film festivals that we've been accepted into and people's response, most people, they a lot of people cry. Uh, a lot of people will share their own stories of um, what has happened in their families. A lot of people in our workshops actually come out in the workshop, sometimes to their co-workers, and that co-workers might not have even known that they were transgender or they were lesbian, gay, or or bisexual. So it's no, but overall the response has been amazingly embracing. Um, people have been open. People have been really wonderful about our little film that could that's out in the world right now in the way that none of us expected it to be. Right? That's what I'm talking about. So I want you to let everybody know how can they find this film outside of watching it here tonight. So right now we are in the festival circuit. So if you are interested in the film, or even more importantly, if you're interested in having Project Ally come and do a one hour to 90 minute workshop or even extended workshop on LGBTQ family acceptance in your workplace, at your church, at your church, at your church, at your church. Yeah. That's the big place to get. Right. <laughs> but if you want us to come out, we'll do workshops, we'll show the film. You can reach me at Roslyn, R-O-S-L-Y-N-C, at Canva.org. You can also find us on Facebook for Project Ally, Project A-L-Y, or Canva Project Ally. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, slash Project Accept LGBTQ Youth and on Twitter at Project Ally Canva. So, yeah. Make sure you guys find her, follow her, support this film, guys. It's really, really important to support. Yeah. And this is something that's really important that we do need to get more educated on and to support and to not, you know, be a prejudice again. So Absolutely. I think what you ladies are doing is fabulous and I wish you all the best. Oh, you and if you want to reach me personally, you can find me on Instagram. I forgot about, you, you know, because I'm a person. <laughs> Who can be reached? That's right. So. On Instagram, I am Roz Angeles, R O Z A N G, you know, Angeles, like Los Angeles. Roz Angeles NYC. I love it. That's my Instagram. You are absolutely fabulous. You guys, are, thank you. Thank you. Sisters rock, right? Yes, we do. You guys have heard it first right here on Talk It Out Radio. I'm Grace Destalia, and we'll be right back. We are back, still rocking out at the Queens Underground First International Black Film Festival. And we've been seeing dope talent here all night, and we got some more beautiful dope ladies standing right next to me, looking absolutely fabulous ladies. Tell us your name. My name is Jody Simmons. And my name is Shermaine Harris. Nice. And as you see, you guys got something draped from your arm. So tell us a little bit about you and what you got on your arm. Okay, so I'm Jody Simmons with Tipping on the Body. With Jody Simmons is a reality TV show. It's based off of a Mardi Gras parade team down in Louisiana. So we bought some beads for everybody. It has our information yes. on it, of course. So we just want to kind of pass it out. I think that's pretty dope. Exactly. That's the way you advertise. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the business. Oh, the business is awesome. We are a dazzling all-star team. So we are basically focused strictly on everything about Louisiana. So what's known? Mardi Gras. So we celebrate Mardi Gras better than anyone else does. Yes, y'all do. Mardi Gras is the bomb in Louisiana. Everybody gets wild and have fun and purges themselves from all of that, right? Exactly. <laughs> so fun. tell us about the film. 
So the film, um, like I said, is based off of a Mardi Gras parade team. It basically details everything that a actual team has to go through to get prepared for Mardi Gras. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, because all we see is the, the lights, camera, action. Yes. Y'all don't see the hard work behind it. Nice. So, yes. Are you ladies from Louisiana? We are. I love that accent. <laughs> Did you come here from Louisiana? Yeah, we just flew in just to um, participate in this. I have to fly right back out in the morning because I have parade. Mardi Gras is Tuesday. So, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. It's coming up already. That's right. Yeah. And you ladies are going to be a part of it? Yeah. <laughs> I might have to get me a yeah. ticket to go. Four more parades to do. Four more parades. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So, do you know the history behind Mardi Gras? Um, so Somewhat, yeah. Can you fill us in? Because I've, I've always been a little fuzzy, like, do we just go there and party, or is that a reason? Basically, you do go there to party. <laughs> but Mardi Gras actually originated in, that, in Alabama, okay. not in, in Louisiana, which some people think. But, you know, we just kind of took it over, captured it, and, I mean, you go down there, you enjoy the king cake, the gumbo, the red beans, and all of that stuff. Yeah. Throw me something, mister. And the men. And the men. <laughs> Don't forget the men. Don't forget the men. You can't forget the men. Right? But yeah, it's, it's Mardi Gras fun. Cool. You got to come down. I have to. Yes. I've never been. I've always wanted to go. I just never to. been. Yes, definitely. And it's every year at the same time every, of March? Well, it's, no, it's just, it's whenever they pick. Actually, it's no, it's between February and March. When that, whatever Fat Tuesday they decide to say, this is Mardi Gras. Okay. Then, yeah, and all the parades lead up to Fat Tuesday, that Tuesday. Gotcha. So, yeah. So we get a little bit of Mardi Gras in this film. What? Y'all yeah. get wild. <laughs> we get wild. Necessity. Yes. It's part of Mardi Gras. <laughs> so outside of seeing the film here tonight, how can people watch this film? So um, we're actually on New TV, which is in LA, California. And you can actually go on YouTube, um, New TV's channel. And also you can visit my YouTube page, Jody Simmons, and all six episodes are actually on there. Wow, you have six episodes. Yes, I have six episodes. That is pretty dope. Are you coming out with seven and eight and nine? I'm coming out with season two, actually. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Um, I've been having my dance studio for 20 years and my parade team for 10. Wow. So, all my life. So you organize the parade, the, the dance team? It all. Yes, ma'am. Check of all, chill of all trade. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So are you dancing too? Well, I am not dancing, but I actually worked for her for two years. And then I was able to venture out and start my own studio. My own because of her, yes. Tell us the name of your studio. My studio is Dancers on Point by Shemaine Harris. Hey, my black entrepreneurs. Black girls definitely rock. So before we get out of here, tell everybody how they can find you and follow you one more time. Okay. Again, you can follow her at Tipping on the Bayou with Jody Simmons, Bayou Girls. Yes, um, on Instagram is at That's Jody and at That's an All Stars. And on Facebook is Jody Simmons and Tipping on the Body with Jody Simmons. And you can catch all six episodes on YouTube under Jody Simmons. So, y'all look like them girls is going to rock out at this Louisiana event. I wish I could be there. But until then, I'm going to make sure I follow y'all on Instagram and watch your show and watch your video, actually, your series. Make sure you check them out, guys, and follow them. You heard it first right here at the International Black Film Festival. I'm Grace Stallion from Talk at our radio and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back, still rocking out here at the International Black Film Festival, and I am talking our radio's host, Grace the Stallion. We got some more awesome talent that is representing here tonight. Tell us your name. Scorch from Harlem, New York. Much. Harlem in the building, because that's where I am from as well. So Harlem is representing. What's your role here? Yeah, I'm an artist. I'm also a host this evening. You're hosting the show? Yes, I'm, I'm hosting as well, and I'm an artist, yeah. I'm loving that dope jacket. Where'd you get it from? Thank you, thank you. It's a little something I threw together. <laughs> it's a little something I threw together. <laughs> well, Stallion is also a fashion designer, so you know I love it when I see beautiful fashion. You're looking dope. So tell us been, about... We invented fashion in Harlem. You know, that's of us. Of course, that's where we got it from. I think that Harlem is like one of the most fashionable cities in New York City. Yes. That of course we'd say that, right? We're from Harlem. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's true. That's all the way. So man. tell us about your art. Okay, yeah, I'm a hip-hop artist, right? I've been doing this like 15 years, roughly. You know, tough. Been burning the scene down for a while. Saying I'm in the music, I'm in the movies. I got a lot of works going on right now. We focus. And you're rapping, right? Yes, yes. How long you been rapping? 15-plus years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, we know there's a, a lot of rap out here. So tell us what kind of rap do you do? Right, hip hop, 
You know, I also write um, R&B, Jamaican music, you know what I'm saying? Pop as well, you know? And my pen game's strong. <laughs> my pen game is strong. All right, so there's no ghostwriter. You're writing your own stuff. I write my own stuff. That's what I'm talking about. So tell us some of the artists you've gotten a chance to work with. Oh, a lot of artists. Uh, P. Nova King, Fly Mugger. Um, I actually got to work with Dame Grease with this, you know what I'm saying? Various artists. Uh, open up for Mac 10. Linda Arena, Battle of the Band, Cineplex. Uh, Definitely a the seasoned list, artist. Is, the list is extensive. Nice. Did you perform here tonight? No, not yet. Not You're yet. going to? Yes. Something you don't want to miss. You want to be there. Tonight. I definitely want to see that. So tell us about the, the song you're going to sing or rap tonight. Okay. Yeah, it's called On Racks, Pockets Full. You know, that one is a, it's a banging club joint. You know, I'm going I'm to let them hear it tonight. You know, let them... Let them get a taste of that. Give them a sample. Definitely, if you guys haven't heard him before, as I haven't, I'm going to be in for a treat, huh? Yes, you're going to be in for a treat. Definitely, you're going to be in for a treat. <laughs> so where can all of our people that are watching find your music and follow you? Right on Instagram, I'm The Real Scorch. That's T-H-E-R-E-A-L-S-C-O-R-C-H, The Real Scorch. Real Scorch. Yeah, there's a couple out there, but... That's neither here nor there. <laughs> so you <laughs> Scorchnation.com, www.scorchnation.com. Nice. Do you have anything coming up? Oh, yes. Oh, we have a gang of stuff coming up. Like I said, I'm in the um, Wolf movie. Shout out to Miller Mac. Nice. It's at Millimeter Mac Films. I'm saying the Wolf movie is coming out in July um, 2020. I'm saying that's in the summertime. So that one is going to be crazy. It's actually stemmed off the Juicy series. You know, yeah, so. You didn't tell us about that, the Wolf movie. Yeah, shout out to the, you know, the good fella at Meter, Millimeter Mac Films, you know, um, Ra and the whole Juicy crew, were it's family right there. Well, what's that about? Tell us real quick, what's that about? Like I said, it stemmed off the Juicy series and all that, so, um, the, the main, one of the main characters, Wolf, I'm co-starring with him in it. Gotcha. And basically, you know, it's a, um, urban, urban street type of film, okay. you know, they deal with, you know, with inner city crime, you know, um, betrayal, treachery, things of that. It's a whole lot of plot to it and a whole lot of, you know, storyline that goes into it. You just got to watch it to see how deep it really is, you know? Nice. You're a man who wears many, many hats. So make sure you guys follow him, find him on social media, give it to them one more time. Yeah, ScorchNation.com, www.ScorchNation.com. On Instagram, I'm the real Scorch. Let's get it. We work. Hey, you heard it first right here at the first International Black Film Festival. I'm Grace the Stallion, and we'll be right back. We are back, guys. Still rocking out here at the Black Film Festival, and we have another beautiful darling up here, looking fabulous in her outfit. Tell everybody your name. Nastasia Anisata. Love it, and I love the accent. Where are you from? I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. Wow, you, did you come here from Jamaica? Technically, yes, I live here though. Oh, wow. Nice, beautiful lady, beautiful accent. So tell us, what is your part in the film festival tonight? Tonight I did um, spoken word, lyric poetry, and um, focused on unity being related through oneness, not sameness. Nice. So it was a definitely um, just overall inspirational feeling to be a part of such a light filled space for creatives. Nice. And what was your feedback in there? It was so great. I was overwhelmed. I was like, yo, Jano, enough respect. <laughs> she said, enough respect. I love it. So how long have you been doing poetry? Actually, I have been doing creative writing for over a decade now. Um, primarily, I was focused on script writing, playwright, and um, screenwriting. And then did journalism for a while. That's what I did in school, okay. media and communications. And then I um, kind of went back to writing songs and poetry. That's a light that was extin extinguished for a while. So it came back to me about two years ago. And the response has been great. But overall, I just feel passionately um, fulfilled by expressing myself creatively that way. I love it. And people respond to spoken word and creative writing and poetry. So that's like the, a, a really great way to reach out to people. Right. Tell us, what kind of inspiration does your, your writing have? Mine is um, on collective consciousness, which is pretty much an equal blend of self and social awareness. So when it comes down to self-awareness, it's mostly about self-development, um, personal growth, the alchemy 
of transmuting pain into power, struggling to success, trials into triumph, the works. And when you come on to social awareness, it's just more about standing up for the least represented and um, standing out against for injustice and inequality and just thinking about humanity being the first and foremost labor that we should be thinking about wearing before anything else. I know that's right. So can you give us a, a line or two, since we missed your performance, give us a line or two from what you performed tonight. Okay. They divide us with constructs because they can't profit from unity. Waging warfare against our subconscious and distract us with mainstream buffoonery. The establishment fears collectivist anarchy. So they rule through governments assigned as proxy. Disguising oligarchy sovereignties as participatory democracy. Not new though. We've seen this with the forced exodus of Africans and the near annihilation of Western native Indians. Acts of conscious Somali, Libyan, Yemeni, Palestinian, Tibetan, Nicaraguan, and Afghan are a Syrian. Even the Great and Lesser Antilles of the Caribbean. Check the abominable acts done in the Congo for a pinch of coltan and the pedophilic sex trade endorsed by the Vatican. All because we abandoned the principles of Mahatian. Purpose misaligned, lacking altruistic characteristics over time. Sporting vessels that carry brains with minds that are asinine. But here's to the few who champion on in the fight that the many won't co-sign. Because humanity itself is a glitch by design. Yes, this lady is fabulous. I am absolutely loving that. Tell everybody how they can find you and follow you. Okay, uh, online, of course. And primarily on Instagram, Nastasia Aniseta, spelled N A S T A S S I A A N I C E T A. I'm also the founder of Evolvix Media and One by Many Inc. And um, you can definitely find me on those two platforms as well. That was absolutely beautiful. You make sure you guys find her, follow her, keep up with her. Do you have anything coming up next? Uh, I'm going to be performing, hopefully, fingers crossed, with Adrian at the second Black History Month um, thing in April. So as soon as those details are finalized, I'll definitely post them so that everyone can stay tuned and just um, support. All right. You guys heard it first here at the Black Film Festival by this beautiful queen. Make sure you find her and follow her. I'm Grace Estalia from Talk It Out Radio, and we'll be right back. We are back, guys. We're still rocking out here at the Black International Film Festival, and I got some more beautiful black divas standing by my side. Hey. hey, ladies, tell us your name. I'm Katrina Carter, and I'm Miss Exquisite, Full Figure USA, New York, 2019. Yes, and yours? I'm Stephanie Hammond, Miss Exquisite, Full Figure USA, Tri State, 2019. Woo, y'all hear them titles? We got Miss Full Figure. We got nothing but hips up here. Nice chocolate and beauty, ladies. Let me say. Y'all are absolutely beautiful. I've enjoyed talking it out with you guys tonight. And we're about to get to know them just a little bit more. Tell us a little bit about you and this whole pageant and how you took the crown. Okay, well, um, I took the crown. There's two of us from New York. And we recently won. Now we're about to go against about 16 other states in April at the Robert Treat Hotel. Um, people come out, support us, Miss Full Figures. And also, I like to say, we just also walked in New York Fashion Week nice. about two weeks ago, the Full Figure. It was, that was an event. So right? Yeah. I love it. I can't wait to dress you guys, because as you know, I am a fashion designer as well. Dress made by Stallion. And so I would love to dress these divas. But I want to know, like, you know, people sleep on Full Figured women. We don't get the praise that we should be getting, you know? They, they, they try to play us. So I want you to tell me, like, preparing for your pageant, what were some of the challenges you faced? The challenges for us was um, finding designers to dress us um, because we're size 16, 18, in between. Um, busts might be a little bit bigger or hips may be a little bit bigger. So it's finding the right stores or designers to try to fit us. Make us look fabulous. Also, makeup. Right. Um, we have a glam squad. That's Ken Doll and Taz. They do our makeup for us. And um, right now, we're looking for sponsors for designers. Um, we have a um, eyelash company that sponsors oh, yeah. lashes. Is popping. Forever Lashes mm -hmm. LLC. Yes. And then um, Time Wise Skincare is one of our also sponsors. So we're pulling in sponsors. It can be a very expensive process. So we look for sponsors so that we can look great and we promote everybody every day on the Instagram and on the Facebook, yes. you know, and um, 
We're enjoying ourselves. The Crown does afford us privileges. Tell us about some of them privileges. The red carpets, um, the concerts, we wear that crown, different events. We speak at um, community service and things like that. So it's been good. We um, we did an event for the elderly for Christmas where we um, did a beauty bar for the residents, the females. We did their hair. We had donations of wigs. We did makeup. We did skin care. So you guys give back as well? Yeah. And then we did a toy drive as well. Okay. I'm also 26 years. I work at the Arca Westchester. I'm a assistant manager for two group homes. Nice. And that's my passion, helping the voice that are voiceless. That's right. And that's what we do this for, right? To inspire yeah. those who feel like they can't do it themselves. Yeah. Women who body shame themselves, yeah. that feel like they're not beautiful enough to wear things that other women may wear. Yeah. I think that's what it's all about. Even our age group, like a lot of women say, oh, you're going to do that? Yes, I'm going to yeah. step out on faith and I'm going to try it and, you know, we'll see where it goes. It takes a lot of confidence, but we're beautiful, so why not do it, right? Might as well try it. <laughs> Just said try it. So tell me, um, during your, your whole pageant experience, what were some of the challenges you faced? Basically the same. It's the whole thing with the designers and the clothes because people say, oh, you can wear this and wear that, but it's not for my body shape. Right. We have hips, we have curves, we have breasts. You know, we so we we're looking for designers that can really fit us and make us look beautiful, right. not just throw a drape on us. I, I want to show my curves. I'm proud of them. <laughs> <laughs> now I know the experience from that because as a model myself, I've I've walked for pretty designers that will just throw something on you, and I'm like, this does not look right. Yeah. So when you're faced with that kind of situation, do you say something or do you just wear it and just get it over with? No, I bow out gracefully, and and I'm very appreciative. Thank you, but I don't think this might be for me, but it's beautiful. Beautiful. How about you? Yes, the same. The same. same. Yeah. You'll just tell them like, uh, thanks, but no thanks. It's like right now we're embracing our sexiness right. and all our curves. So I mean, when we did Fashion Week, we walked for um, Triple Stitch Diva which is knitwear, yes, so, and JoJo's Closet, and uh, we got to wear some sexy stuff. I got to show my boobies. <laughs> I got to show my yeah. boobies. So do you ladies have anything coming up next? Um, right now, just a pageant, but we're also doing a fundraiser at Soho Park on March 10th, where we're raffling off a Fox Poncho. It's a $1,100 coat. We're raffling off at $10 a ticket, and um, the winner goes home with, we have smoke gray, blue and brown and black nice yes yeah something that you know it embraces the full-size women it's it goes up to one x wow that's so awesome a fox a leathered body fox? yeah like um in between the creases is leather okay very nice i would love to have you guys on talk it out radio for one of my ladies nights so i'm looking forward to seeing you guys before we get out of here can you tell everybody how they can find you follow you stalk you know yeah. <laughs> Well, you can find me on um, Instagram. My name is Katrina Carter 914. And I'm on Facebook. My name is Katrina Carter. Follow me. Her delicious. And I'm Stephanie Hammond 718 on Instagram and on Facebook, Stephanie Hammond. Stephanie. <laughs> These divas are absolutely fabulous. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We're still rocking out here at the Queens Underground International Black Film Festival right here in Queens, New York City. I'm Grace Thee Stallion, and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we are back here at the Queens Film Festival with another great talent standing beside me. Won't you say hello and tell us your name? What's going on, peoples? The name is Ray Luke. I'm a filmmaker. Yeah, like money. Sound like money, but that's my real name. <laughs> I know that's right. All right. Well, Ray, what is your um, your role here tonight in the film festival? Uh, tonight at the film festival, I have uh, one of my short films being shown. It's called Two Wrongs. It's actually on YouTube. It's a uh, Pretty much like a Twilight Zone, Twilight Zone-ish type film. I like that. Tell us what it's about. Um, this one is about a guy that um, played a joke on his friend. Okay. The joke went so wrong that he pretty much like set him up with his daughter to sleep with his daughter. That oh no! His daughter. Yeah. Oh, that is grimy, grimy. Yeah. It's going to be shown in a few minutes. I would love to see that. So, Ray, is this your first time, your first film, or have you been writing for a while? I've been writing since a kid, really. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So this is your passion, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. So, what was your inspiration behind writing this piece? Um, revenge is like uh, some people feel like revenge is going to end everything, but mm. 
it's almost like instant karma is going to happen when you go, you know, take the revenge route. So it's just instant karma. You got to see what's going to happen, though. You got to tell us what's your favorite scene in this movie. I can't tell you because if I tell you, Come on. the whole thing. Oh, is it really? The ending. The ending. The ending. The ending. The ending. The ending. So that, that gives people a reason to go watch it yeah. to the end. The ending, yeah. It's dope. it's dope. So where is this film showing at outside of being here tonight? Um, It's on YouTube. Yeah, so you can type in uh, two wrongs with a Z at the end of it, not a S, two, W-R-O-N-G-Z. Yeah, so I actually have three two wrongs films, but uh, this one is called The Joke. The Joke. They have one called The Cake, one called The Something, I forgot in the first <laughs> one, but this one is The Joke, you're gonna love it. And what about your cast, are any of them here tonight or? Nah, I'm here for Dolo. I'm here with my wife. She came through to support. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's all you need, right? That's all I need. She's here with me, so I'm good. That's what I'm talking about. Do you have anything coming up next? Oh, yeah. Um, I have a web series, an award-winning web series. Nice. Force to Sin. Uh, it's about foster kids that are being forced to sin. So uh, season one is already out. Season two comes out March 1st. So I'm having a screening at a movie theater. Private location. Nice. Yeah, so then it's going to be on YouTube also, same day. Nice. This is Talk It Out Radio, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back, wrapping it up here at the International Black Film Festival with the CEO, the creator, the woman who has put this all together tonight. She's done a fabulous job. We saw some great talent, guys. We've talked it out with a lot of great talent, and now we get to talk it out with the woman herself. How you doing? I am doing great. Thank you guys so much for coming. This is amazing. People came in, and they actually got to walk on the red carpet and have the interview. I was so appreciative. We are so appreciative. And you look fabulous, darling. Much. Thank you. So I know you're exhausted. Uh huh. No, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. You're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I know it was a lot of work putting this together. So tell people, like, people don't know. They think you just, you know, they come here and they just get the, the ending result. But give us a little bit of what you had to go through. Okay, well, what I can tell you is I spoke to a couple of other people who have film festival companies and they said it takes a team one year. That's right. This is our second film festival in less than six months. And my team is literally my son and I. And wow. once in a while, I have other help during the week. So it was a lot because you have the filmmakers and we have movie shorts, music and poetry videos, the web series episodes. Then we have the live performances. Then we have the pop-up shop. Then we have the community awards, right? And then it was just coordinating all of that because as you know, you spend more time on marketing and promoting and then we didn't find any sponsors, so this was right. self-funded. Right. And when I was making a joke about, you know, for people's credit cards, my best friend's that's sitting right. over there, my other one's over there, and, you know, my family. So that's what happens. But it's day in and day out, because right. you're constantly communicating with all of these different, you know, groups. But the marketing is very serious. It really is. And, guys, she is looking for sponsors. We got to support our, We got to support each other, definitely. Like you said, you did all of the work mostly by yourself, and it is a lot. But we got to get some sponsors. There's lots of them out there, so they can definitely chip in and help us out for the next one. But tell us, how did you go about choosing the film? The films, it was weird because you figure it said the International Black History um, Month Film Festival. We have submissions from 12 countries. Russia, Italy, Denmark, China, Iran, France, and, and did I say India? Yes. And people said, well, why would you choose those films? And what I understand about life is if you feel like you're the underdog and, and you have a story to tell and you're able to take what you're going through and rise to the top, then in a sense, it kind of makes you black. And if people around the world can connect with that and feel that vibe, then I'm not here to say, no, you're not. Absolutely. You can't do that. So we chose the films based on who submitted and then followed the instructions, <laughs> which seems to have been a challenge. But what we had to do, we had so many films, we have part two in April. There was no way, this is a one day film festival that's six hours, and you see we have live performances going right. on. So what we had to do, part two would be in April, because it's hard to say no when you see people put their heart and their money and their time, and people are volunteering and people are loaning them spaces. I can't sit here and say no to someone who did a quality project. 
I would love to know, what gave you the passion to want to do this in the first place? Um, I like being self-employed. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was, and Senator Carmi, you know, explained it when he was on stage. We had a studio. So we had one night of um, pop-up shop. We had one night of jazz. We had one night of hip-hop. And then we had one night of poetry. Then we used to do the, the painting classes, and then Chanel, who's downstairs, she taught sewing, right? So when it was time to close the studio and, you know, move into the next thing, because what we were doing, we really did outgrow the space, I sat there and I said, well, what can we do that makes sense? And a friend of mine suggested a film festival. And I'm like, that will do it. So we were able to take everything we did separately and roll it into one. That is awesome talent. So you want to tell us some of the people you had here tonight? Oh, you think I can remember their names? <laughs> no, not names. Oh. <laughs> okay, I could do this. Senator Comrie. <laughs> we have Councilman Miller is here. Uh, ABC, uh, not ABC, Showtime, right. Cinemax, HBO. I think the Amsterdam News was here. Talk It Out show, the, the Air It Out show. Um, and then with the filmmakers, they flew in from seven states wow. for this. Um, Councilwoman Alicia Hyman was here. So there were, and half of the police department, yeah. yay, you know, has been here. But we just have some amazing talent. There are artists from all over Queens and evidently other countries. Yes. I was very shocked to hear people that were on this red carpet that said they were flying from Texas, California. We had Detroit. We had Louisiana. I mean. Oklahoma and Atlanta. Yes, Atlanta. Hey, you have people from everywhere. How does it feel to get that big, enormous amount of support? You know what it feels like? It feels like you, you finally find that thing that people need. Because it's really, it's always about servicing that need. So you sit here and you go, okay, I have a dream. Let's do a show. And then you think you're crazy. But all of the people who showed up, it's like, wow. So I did pick it right this That's time. Right. I got it right. Yes, and did. this is evidently something, because we don't have this. Right. And we don't have red carpet in Jamaica, Queens. We don't have a red carpet that's affordable, and that's really, at the end of the day, wow. what it's about. So Absolutely. that means middle class people can actually have a red carpet. <laughs> I love it. So lastly, what is your words of advice to people who are inspiring to do things like this, who don't know where to start, who think they can't do it? What is your advice to them? Honestly, it really does take a lot of thinking. It's like when you're in construction, you measure twice and cut once. Mm. I, I hear people tell, oh, just jump in and do it. No, it is crazy because you're going to be broke. You're going to think that you're crazy. Everybody around you is going to think you're crazy. But when you have a passion deep inside of you, keep that passion, but you have to be practical about it. Right. Not every 50-year-old can be a rapper. Not every 45-year-old is going to be a basketball player. Right. Put some practicality behind it. And people say, Edu college doesn't matter, education doesn't matter. I totally disagree. This is coming from someone who spent 12 years in college, mm. walked out with five, you understand? Ooh. So there's a lot of thoughts that went into it. So, it, and then you have to deal with other people. You have to be able to write a letter. Why do people send me emails that go, hey? Oh, I hate that. I ignore Hey? Those. I ignore exactly. those. <laughs> so what if I were Oprah Winfrey? Right. Or, you know, Tyler Perry? Right. You're gonna send me an email that says, hey? or I invite you to my office and you don't know how to sit in a right. chair. So it's not just the idea. You have to have that background education. You have to have the manners, the etiquette. You have to be able to sit down and figure out how to problem solve. What are you going to do when you don't have any money? Because that's going to be most of the time. That is awesome advice. People, like you said, think like you just jump right in there. But you got to be well-rounded and be able to tackle every single aspect of this business. Sure you guys heard it first right here from the CEO herself. That is some awesome advice. You did a fabulous job again tonight. And thank you for having me. I really thank you so much. You're very welcome. So what is coming up next? When can they see the next festival? The next festival will be October. So submissions open the end of April. And that is just simply the October International Film Festival. And it will have to be, I thought three days, it may have to be four, wow. because the panel needs to talk. We need to have interactive you know, situations going on where people right. can get involved and really, because what I want people to learn is 
come in here and then try the things out. If you want to be a journalist, yes. someone should be able to interview yes. you. Right. If you want to know what it's like to be a grip or what it's like to be a, you know, a director, I want to be able to have those real life experiences. That's what our community needs. That's right. And how can anybody find you or if they want to email you or? Oh, I'm Queens Underground 718 at gmail.com. And it's the same thing on Instagram. And we are Queens. No, what am I? I'm Film Fest. Listen, it's, it's tired. I am Film Festivals with an S, Queens Underground. But you can find, again, you can find us on Instagram. And if you can't find us, please call Grace the Stallion. She knows how to find me. I sure do. <laughs> we are sisters for life. You guys heard it first right here from Queens Underground at her first international black film festival here in Queens. I am Grace the Stallion from Talk It Out Radio. Have a great night. Talk it out. Talk it out. What's on your mind? Talk it out. Do you have some time? Talk it out. I wanna let you know you can call Grace at the Talk It Out show. And talk it out. What's on your mind? Talk it out. Do you have some time? Talk it out. I wanna let you know you can call Grace at the Talk It Out show. And talk it out. You need the latest news and the latest fashion Tune in to talk it out and watch that stallion The whole city know that we on the horizon The talk of the city, New York Talk with me if you need the vent Or if your rent spent, things don't make no sense Life getting too tense, put your troubles on hold If you sip or you roll, whatever I suppose Turn on the radio, you with the